Hey guys, it's Sam and these are more of my recent reads. I'm not really doing monthly wrap-ups anymore because I can't commit to necessarily having filmed like right at the beginning of the month with like my schedule and things. So I'm doing recent reads, but like I mentioned the last one of these I did, I waited too long. So I just split this one into two. So I'll try to still do it monthly-ish, but not at the beginning or end of the month necessarily. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, they'll pop up approximately monthly. I finally read The Mad Ship by Robin Hobb. Uh, these last couple of months you'll have noticed because I talked about Words of Radiance in the last video that I'm continuing with series that have big chonky books in them. And so I read The Mad Ship. Uh, this is the second book in the Live Ship Trader series. This is a world in which there are ships made out of a thing called wizard wood and th that imbues them with like magical qualities. And after three captains consecutively die on board, they're all from the same family, uh, they become sentient, the ships become sentient. And so this is following some trader families in that world, as well as like a pirate in that world. And so you get POVs of some of the ships and all of that and like, it is very big and expansive. So I actually have some conflicting feelings about The Mad Ship uh, because I was reading this for so long. I was reading this book for nearly a month. I was reading other things between it. Like I was reading, um, I usually always have a physical book going and then I'll have like an audiobook uh, and then usually like a nonfiction of some kind. So it wasn't that I was just stuck in this the whole time and it wasn't a book I wanted to DNF necessarily. It is just so heavy <laughs> and long and slow and like character driven but that's also what makes it really great so i'm gonna be doing a full review talking about this and probably a gush slash discussion um because this is so like there isn't anything that you can really edit down about in these books like everything it gives you it has importance because it is very character driven and the character arcs are immaculate but also robin hobb makes her characters suffer so much that you're like like this is at this point my fifth Robin Hobb book that I've read because I read the first three Farseer books which is the first trilogy then the second trilogy is in a different part of the world so I read the first one not this one and so I've been in it long enough to know that like if the characters are planning something that you're optimistic about you're like I really want that to work out it's probably not going to and that's actually hard to read for like 900 pages yeah I have every faith that like things generally will be maybe like okay-ish positive maybe by the end but like who knows you know so there's a lot of things loved about this the character arcs and things there are characters in here who are just like so fascinating you really have to read these books for the character study like the world is very cool and there's some really cool world elements and things but the characters are where it, it really is at and there are really with few exceptions there's a few characters who are like straight up villains but the villains even are like very compelling and then most of the characters are neither like bad or good like they're so, and I won't even call them morally gray because I think it's more complex than that. Like we hear morally gray and we think of something very specific. This is like just fully imagined people <laughs> who are very complex and one minute you'll love them and the next minute you'll hate them and you'll see why they're doing something but you're so frustrated with them. That's what these books are. So it's tough and the plot is incredibly meandering and this takes place over a very long period of time and I really love them but they're also really hard to read. So I want to read the next book before the end of the year. I was hoping to read it like this quarter, like before like September. That's not going to happen. I do want to read it before the end of the year though, like maybe November. Um, but it's just like, ugh. like it's hard to want to read them even though they're good. They're an enigma, okay? They, plurality exists. They can be two things at once. They can be incredibly difficult to read and still very good and something that you want to read and also not. So anyway, 4.5 out of 5 stars, almost a 5. The only thing keeping it from being 5 out of 5 stars is because there is that like, there are times I don't want to read this. Um, but could I bump it up to a five? Yes. The triggers in that, by the way, because I said it's very heavy. Slavery, rape, body horror, misogyny, child abuse, all on page. Uh, yeah, and it's it's very visceral and right in front of you. And the characters go through it. So it's really good though. I recently reread Weave the Liminal by Laura Tempest Ackroft. This is a book that I read like in 2020 originally, and it is a witchcraft book. It's about traditional modern witchcraft, but I've been doing all of my like in-depth discussion of witchy books and things over on my Patreon. So that's linked down below. I just want to discuss witchy stuff on a more like personal level and like the smaller community of Patreon feels more after that. So anyway, I reread this. I gave it five stars on first read, four stars on reread, and I have a post explaining why that is. Then I read What Feasts at Night by T. Kingfisher. I love T. Kingfisher. I want to read more T. Kingfisher. I might completely abandon what I have as my kind of October TBR because I'm trying to read all the books on my shelf that were there at the beginning of the year before the end of the year, right? Remember that goal that I have if you've been around? But part of me wants to just abandon all of it to just read a lot of T. Kingfisher because T. Kingfisher does just like cozy horror 
so well. Some of you might say that's a cozy horror can't, can't go together. They can. What Feasts at Night is the second book in the Sworn Soldier series. I think there's going to be more right now. It's just a duology. Uh, and this follows a character who is a uh, non-binary soldier living in this like fictional place sort of around like World War One, but it's like a fantasy World War One. Like it's it's like there's some real places and there's some not real places mixed in. Anyway, they end up in these situations in the first book, which was uh, What Feeds the Dead, um, where like something is happening. They're not sure if it's like magic or if it's science. And sometimes it's kind of a mix of both uh, and stuff ensues. Um, they're little novellas and they're very fun. And the pacing in these is immaculate. The world building and like the creepiness and the not quite being sure about like what's happening again. Is it science? Is it like mystical? We don't know. In this book we also have the character dealing with trauma from the stuff that happened in the first book <laughs> because that was creepy and the stuff that happened in the war that they've been a part of. So they're dealing with like trauma and stuff and then also just like really creepy shit going on. But why I call it cozy is because there's an element in these books of like the characters and the character relationships and especially this one is like nice <laughs> even though creepy fucked up shit is happening it's nice and yeah i think it's there's something about it usually being like in this case they are in a uh they're like family homestead kind of um so they're away from everybody else in the first book they're at the house of usher if you are familiar with that reference um so they're in like a mansion away from everyone there's just like a coziness but it's like cozy creepy it's so fun. Because it is horror, there are some creepy things. There's trigger warnings for animal death and like body horror stuff. But if you can get through that, ah, oh, T. Kingfisher, so good. 4.5 out of 5 stars. Maybe a 5. In the way that I just like gushed about it, it's maybe a 5. I really love this. Like the series itself, 5 stars. I love it. It's so good. But like, I'm a big baby. So I usually can't read scary stuff. This is like just the right amount of spooky. Just the right amount of spooky. It's so good. Then I continued on with my chunky books with the fourth book in the Expanse series, Cibola Burn. Cibola Burn? Cibola Burn. I'm pretty sure it's Cibola Burn. They never actually say the titles in the books like this. They don't, they don't talk about these things. Anyway, I recently started watching the Expanse TV show with one of my partners and I like love it. And so I was getting re-immersed in this and I was like, I want to continue reading the series. So if you're not familiar, this is a adult sci-fi series that is space opera E. So there's like all of these political machinations things going on. It's multiple POV. Every book so far always at least features James Holden, who's like the main character of the series, although not even the most likable character in the series. And then each book also has some additional POVs in it about what's happening. Like, he this this man ends up involved in so many political machinations things so you have like earth versus mars versus the people that are out in the asteroid belt and those are all very different cultures and some of the people want to be at war and there's all these different factors but there's also a weird alien virus that can completely transform you that has been unleashed on us and so like it's kind of game of thrones level politicking with like this really big threat <laughs> of this virus. So that's like what the whole series is. And in this one, we've discovered like even a new place. Uh, so without going into too many details about that, this one was just fine for me. Uh, this is not my favorite of all of them thus far. I didn't really love the additional POV characters we get in this book. So we always get Holden and he's not my favorite of the people on the crew. Some of his other crewmates I'm way more fond of than him. And then the additional characters we got here just didn't feel substantial. And there are other characters who are still a part of things that we didn't get like their POV and I'm like, I miss you, come back. Um, so this one also felt like a lot of setup. There's like a final thing in like the epilogue that's like, oh, all of this was to, in the hopes of preventing this bad thing. And so it's kind of like set up -y for other stuff. So this just felt like a little bit more of a filler book, even though there's some important things that happen. And yeah, like I don't really care about the other POVs, wasn't really attached to those. Uh, so yeah, this was just like a three out of five star. Like I carry the series along, but not my favorite. Then I read Funny Story by Emily Henry, which I did have a physical copy of, but I've already given away because I didn't really like it. Uh, so <laughs> this is, I'm surprised, but not. This is a standalone adult romance, uh, contemporary romance. And this follows a character who was recently left uh, by her fiance of like multiple years for his girl best friend. Um, and the girl best friend's boyfriend because she had a boyfriend of like three years um is like the only person that she can stay with that this like the main character can stay with so she goes and she like lives with him but because their partners went off and like ran away together right um and so it starts out with this like fake dating premise of like oops uh we want to sort of make these people jealous who like treat us horribly so now we're sort of fake dating but that premise doesn't stick around long enough and then it becomes like i don't even know what like the i mean it's kind of forced proximity stuff but I got anyway basically like this didn't end up working for me and I wasn't sure it was going to based on the premise I was like this could really go either way so what didn't work for me 
and I talked about this in um, our How Salt book club live show. I should maybe do a review for this. If you want me to do a full review for this, uh, comment down below and let me know. Um, but basically what didn't work for me is that the fake dating didn't last long enough. Um, the sort of relationship formed really too quickly between these two. There was not enough like burn. Um, There's a lot of this like will they won't they but they like get they like hook up like quickly and a lot and whatever um and so that was not good i felt like the side characters in this for emily henry book were fairly weak i think emily henry generally does side characters and like side relationships very well and i didn't feel that here the like themes of this one were also pretty weak um didn't really care for the main characters as people like just didn't feel a deep connection to them like this just felt very bland like there were a lot of things that could have worked really well that didn't for me so like it just like things just didn't go quite far enough and it's very forgettable and i do not want to reread it where any other emily henry book even people we met on vacation i would reread this one I will not, which is why I got rid of it. So yeah, I gave this like two, 2.5 stars because the first part of it, um, like that first third that was kind of the fake dating actually really worked for me. Like it was really good. I was having that like, ooh, I'm feeling like the chemistry with them and whatever. And then that peter off. So it's still like a, like if I hadn't known it was Emily Henry book, I probably wouldn't have disliked it as much, but also like, I mean, I still would have because there was elements that I really didn't like, but that would have been almost more forgivable because Emily Henry, I hold to a higher standard because I know she has it in there. And this just like did not work. So I'll still keep reading Emily Henry books, but this one's not for me. Bottom of my Emily Henry list. Then I read The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshni Chakshi. Guys, this is so good. And I knew that it would be. Uh, this is following a unnamed protagonist who is essentially the uh, groom, the spouse of this character Indigo, who is this very mysterious woman and it's written in a way that is very like lyrical and mystical where you're like is there magic involved is there not it's supposed to be kind of kind of kind of a bluebeard retelling that's sort of like gender swapped but it's bluebeard mixed with like so many other myths and like the book also points out those myths and yeah so you get that but you also get the pov eventually of a character from indigo's past as well so you get both of these um, timelines and they like eventually kind of intersect and everything goes from there. Oh, it's so good guys. So this is, the writing is impeccable. I'm going to do a full review on this, but the writing is impeccable because you have this world that's like, is it magic? Is it not? Which is, I really love that just because it's that like fabulous and magical realism, but like not really. And you have these characters who like Indigo as a character is just very intriguing because it's like, is she like a decent person? Is she not? What is her backstory? Like, Ugh. Um, and then you have all of these myths interwoven where you have the characters like referencing different myths and um, different like love myths and different myths that involve like secrets and finding secrets and just like the tropes of myths. Like it's a book of, of its own myth that is very self-aware and aware of other myths, right? So it's so good. Uh, if you don't like purpley prose, you're not going to like this, but this wasn't overly purple to me. I would say this is just very like flowery and lyrical and it's like short. So it like it hits and the symbolism nah, it's so good anyway five to five stars i loved it but still dark this is like a very dark if you know the tale of like bluebeard that should have already been a hint this is a very dark fairy tale so there's child death child abuse sexual assault blood kind of like body horror type stuff but it's it's heavy but it's good like if you enjoy Ava Reed books, I would say. You'd probably like this. And the last book I want to talk about is sadly a DNF. Only my third DNF of the year, though. So I think I'm doing pretty well. And that is The Sun and the Void by Gabriela Romero La Cruz. And this is one that I like, ugh, I held off for a while because there was a lot of talk about it and people like really criticizing it. And then I heard a lot of people talking about that the criticism wasn't really warranted and it was like people not necessarily reading it critically. Like it wasn't necessarily the best book ever written, but a lot of the critiques were like not quite fair uh, and all this. So I decided to give it a go. I tried, and if you're going to attempt to do this, I think you should do it this way. I tried to read it on audiobook. That was a little bit too much. Then I tried to kind of like dual read it with the audio and the physical copy. That is better. Um, the audio I had to super slow down. I usually listen to audio on like almost two speed. This I had to listen to on like 1.5. But this is following two POVs of um, two women in this fantasy world who are a mix of like human and some other creature. So there's like um, Valkos, which are um, creatures like with horns um, and things. And then there's um, 
no, Nosreels, no, Nosreels, I'm, for, I'm forgetting how they say it now, um, who have like prehensile tails um, and like ridges on their nose and like fingers and things and they're kind of seen as like the worst ones like most bestial and there's one other one I'm forgetting. I don't think we actually get to see those but there's one other one. Um, and so you have that so you follow these two characters one who's part uh, Nozarel, Noz I'm saying that wrong I think but that's how it sounds and then one who's part Valko um, and they're existing in this world that has um, Heomancia which is like um, magic based on metals and they are like outcasts for different reasons and are really like pulled to this like Heomancia magic and there's like gods so in case you can't tell this is a very convoluted heavy world building story and that's part of why I DNF'd it because it ended up not working because there's so many moving pieces. So we have these two POVs and we are in, we're not switching back and forth enough in the writing to like kind of keep track of what's going on with them because we'll be in one POV for like a long time and then we'll switch back to the other one. And you're like, what the heck is going on? Because at least at the beginning, they are not intertwined at all. I got almost 200 pages in and they still hadn't like crossed paths or anything. Um, so it's kind of unclear as to why we're having these like two POVs. The characters also don't feel like distinct enough for me. Like there are lots of things about their stories that overlap in a way that makes their like narrative voices not like super distinct. And then the world building is really cool. Like you have these like dark gods and you have um, all these different kinds of like magic that you can do with these different metals and like the different political like factions and stuff and the different like types of sort of creatures and like hybrid people. But there's so much and there's so many pieces that it's like, it's so convoluted. Um, and yeah, and like I said, the characters don't really feel like very distinct. And then there's like so many characters and so many names. And it's using like a lot of Spanish, which again is just like very confusing. It's not a bad thing, but when you have so much world building and then some of the world building is in like sort of a different language, it becomes like very confusing. So yeah, I highly recommend the audiobook if you're gonna attempt this because the audiobook like pronunciations and narration is really good. And then reading it alongside because there's a map and there's um, like a glossary in the back for terms. But yeah, there were things not even just about the world building, I think it could push through that, but like the pacing, the narration, um, just the heaviness of the world building. Uh, and like the need for editing. All of that just made it where I was like, I, I can't keep pushing through this, unfortunately. Which is a shame, because I would have liked to have seen where it went, but yeah. So I DNF'd this at like 30%, which I think is a solid go. Uh, and I, I feel like a lot of people were pretty disappointed with this for various reasons. So I gave it a good college try. So that is it for all the books that I've read recently. Comment down below and let me know what books you've read recently, if you are going to read any of these. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.